Now, several people asked this next question. Um, Grant and Portia, uh, you both asked about how do you trust again? You know, when there's been an emotional betrayal, how do you come back into your hearts where you can actually be vulnerable? And where do you get that faith to trust once again? Yeah, it's a great question. Now, we first need to understand trust is the outcome of an emotional experience in the body. And that emotional experience is one of safety. When we feel safe, uh, we trust. We can't trust without safety. Um, safety is the cause of that experience that we call trust. So the thing that I want to tell you both is um, if you want to trust again, you have to find safety, emotional safety. And by the way, don't confuse emotional safety with comfort. Comfort is what the mind needs in order to kind of stay limited and in survival mode. By emotional safety, it means feeling so um, open in your heart and in your physiology and in your mind that you in fact can stretch and become much bigger than you thought you were. It's the emotional safety that lets others in, that allows you to actually love fully and to actually just be with your pain without having to hide it, fix it, um, or run away from it. So this, this, this whole question is really about, not so much about how do you develop trust, but how do we then develop safety? Well, there are several things that we need to consider. Safety with yourself, and safety with your partner. You may think everything has to do with, well, how it's all to do with the other person. If the other person betrayed my trust, I need to work on how do I develop a trusting and safe relationship with them, right? Well, yes, we'll talk about that in a moment. But what's also important is that you gotta remember where you are feeling the lack of safety is within you. It's within your physiology that your physiology is closed. You're the one with the closed heart. And you know, in other words, you have to live with the consequence of that. Uh, ultimately, um, when, when uh, you know, the consequence of not feeling safe in our body is that we close down, we go into defense. So in other words, when you're not trusting, you're not feeling safe. When you don't feel safe, it means your body and your physiology is in defense, which means you've closed down part of your energetic emotional system, <clears throat> which means you won't feel the pain as much, you won't feel the hurt as much, you won't feel the loss or the suffering as much. But it also means you won't feel the joy as much, you won't feel the happiness as much, you won't feel the, the ecstasy of love as much. Because remember, when you diminish one emotion, you diminish all emotion, because there's no such thing as a negative emotion. All emotion is intrinsically enjoyable. It's the resistance to feeling that's painful, all right? Again, there's far more to that in, in our courses and in other stuff which you've heard me talk about in, in other areas. But to, just to continue on this, on this vibe, therefore, if, if, it's all, if the priority is to look at how do you develop safety within yourself, because everything is going to be flattened and diminished as you go into, into defense, well, there are many ways you can do that individually. And, you know, there's so many ways, I can't talk about them all in this video. But a simple practice you can try is to develop a connection with your body. And of course, people do this in many different ways, whether it's through going to a chiropractor or doing yoga or, or you know, there's countless practices. One very simple one you can do is just um, focusing your breath and your energy, that is your presence, on particular parts of your body and combining that with a bit of movement so that you can actually begin to kind of like almost scan your body to feel whether there's an area that feels safe or not. In other words, you scan your body for where you feel safe in your body and where you feel unsafe. Now here's the thing, do not focus your attention on the unsafe area, on the area that you don't trust. In other words, leave that be. Instead, just enjoy focusing on an area that you feel safety and actually begin to you know neurologically wire a habit of continuously connecting to the physical breath movement and touch of the part of your body that's already in safety when you do that you expand that area and it will naturally push out those areas that don't feel safe you know we have to focus on resources not on the issue most people focus on the issues but if you notice the more issues you look for the more issues you find so this is um, an opportunity to connect to the body. Now, that's developing safety with yourself, just one out of a million different ways you can do it. When it comes to developing safety with your partner, 
um, after a betrayal? Well, it's going to take creating new agreements with her or him, depending on who's asking. Couples need to sit down and develop a container for their relationship. That's why it's called a safe container. The purpose of coming into agreements is that those agreements function um, to create safety within your communication and in your interaction. Now, the first agreement you have to make is to agree that these agreements are important. You have to agree to actually make these agreements. That's the first thing. Now, if your partner is not willing to really work on making new agreements to create and recreate the foundation of your relationship, you can't really go forward on the, with this person. It really is that, that important. This is critical. Um, these agreements, by the way, we're talking about confidentiality, no third party talk, um, accountability, confrontation, a consensus, how you make decisions, you know, infidelity, or how it all works, you know, around all of that notification, um, how you interact when you are enumerated that, you know, it goes into quite a lot of detail. And this is a huge piece of it. This is how you build the boundary of safety um, in your relationships. Now, by the way, boundaries aren't the end game. It's not as if we're trying to build a whole bunch of rules. Um, we're actually making rules to break rules, but you need to first have boundaries before you can be free of them. A lot of people try to get into a trusting relationship with such an open space, which has no clarity about what's in and what's out. It's very hard to feel safe in it. So you need to know where you are, where you stand and where the other person is and where they stand. And when you feel safe enough to, to actually have a relationship within that real strong container, then you can start experimenting going beyond the container. But that takes years. It usually takes years. It's not something you do in a few days or weeks. And again, this, this video is far too short to go through the entire scope of all the agreements. And again, this is something we teach a lot at the retreats and at the events and in our programs. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope, I hope this was helpful and that this answers your question a little bit. Um, and, you know, uh, please share this with your friends, share this with your um, family, your contacts. Just click on the Facebook or Twitter icons below. Please leave a comment as well. I'd love to hear what you say. And I'll be interacting personally with those comments as well. So, you know, uh, feel free to do that. And of course, if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, please go to love relationships and you.com to get more information and to register for an event okay we are done for today i'll see you tomorrow all the best now